And at this incredibly delicate moment uh, in terms of security globally, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is back in the hospital. The Pentagon says he's receiving treatment at Walter Reed National Medical Center for an emergent bladder issue. In the meantime, Austin has temporarily now transferred his duties to Deputy Defense Secretary Kathleen Hicks. CBS News National Security Correspondent David Martin is at the Pentagon. Uh, David, first of all, well, thanks for joining us. And um, what can you tell us about Austin's condition and about Deputy Secretary Kathleen Hicks, who's taking over the position for now? Well, the latest statement from Austin's doctors is it's not clear how, how much longer he's going to uh, have to remain in the hospital. So as of this morning, he uh, canceled a uh, trip scheduled for later this week to Europe to attend both a, a NATO defense minister's meeting and a meeting of the Ukraine contact group, which is uh, a coalition of about 50 countries who provide support to Ukraine in its uh, war against Russia. He will attend the Ukraine meeting virtually, but uh, he's not going to be there in person. You mentioned that he has turned over his responsibilities to Kathleen Hicks. Uh, she is uh, a defense professional. She's held several jobs uh, in the Pentagon over the last uh, 25 years, and the last three as deputy. And in the Pentagon, the deputy is the person responsible for the nuts and bolts of running this vast complex called the uh, Department of Defense. <laughs> she is very much the inside person in the, in the running of the Pentagon, and so she has not been seen very much on the uh, world stage, um, but she does know her stuff. No, oh, I bet. Um, <clears throat> let's turn now to what we were just talking about, the Israel-Hamas war. An administration official has privately acknowledged missteps over how the U.S. is communicating its Israel policy. First, tell us what those missteps are that have been acknowledged, and is the policy expected to change? Well, the missteps were not uh, being publicly forceful enough uh, about uh, Israel's campaign military strategy, which has caused so many uh, casualties to uh, Palestinian civilians. My experience is when uh, uh, government officials say they haven't communicated their policy effectively, it means they haven't executed it mm. effectively. And, so euphemism, uh, <laughs> communicate. <yeah. laughs> Uh, just, just last week, uh, the White House said it could not support an Israeli offensive against that crossing at Rafah, where more than one million uh, Palestinians have fled to escape the fighting in other parts of, of Gaza, without first seeing a, uh, a clear and coherent and executable plan for protecting all of those uh, civilians. And at the same time, of course, the Biden administration is pushing very hard for another and longer pause in Israeli military operations in return for the release of all the hostages. But at the same time, uh, they say that this hostage release wouldn't even be on the table if it weren't for Israel's continuing military pressure on Hamas. So you can, you can sort of see the, uh, the crunch coming here if there is a deal uh, for a substantial pause in return for release of all the hostages, will the U.S. then press for a ceasefire mm -hmm. in Gaza, and will Israel continue to insist that it is not going to stop until all of Hamas has been eliminated? Yeah, I guess it's a question of just how stern Blinken has been when meeting with Netanyahu. David Martin, thank you so much. Sure thing.